After the horrendous tragedy in Meron on the Jewish holiday of Lag Ba'omer, which left 45 beautiful Jewish souls dead, including children, all religious, a prominent Israeli publicist named Yaron London publicly stated that this is not his tragedy to mourn, because those who died are not his people. That is a horrifying and despicable comment about his fellow Jews, both just because they are religious Jews. All this while the whole country is mourning this tragedy. Yet, he says that they are not his people and he won't mourn? This is absolutely disgusting. Unfortunately, he was not alone with this sentiment. Yet, very much a minority. And that is the important, critical point to remember. As you know, social media censorship is growing. The best way to support our work is to subscribe to our video newsletters on PulseOfIsrael.com and to share our videos. If you are already a subscriber, then thank you. Two additional ways to connect with and support Israel. Number one, click on the link to this fabulous Bikurim First Fruits project to help us strengthen Israel by strengthening Judea and Samaria. It's simple. Just click on the website and choose the best option that works for you to strengthen Israel by strengthening Judea and Samaria. And number two, enjoy the beauty of Israel whenever you want. No matter where you are in the world, you can enjoy our online virtual tours of Israel. Just visit IsraelIsBeautiful.com and choose the virtual video and activity package that works for you. Anyone who follows me knows that I speak about the deep unity of the Jewish people in the land of Israel and of all sectors in Israel, despite the headline news that always focus on how there is such division between the different sectors in Israel. I tell people to disregard the headlines because they only serve to sensationalize news and current events. In reality, on a day-to-day -day basis, ultra-Orthodox Jews, religious Jews, secular Jews, Christians, Muslim, Druze, Arabs, all work together, shop together, get gas together, get treated together in hospitals, work together in hospitals, and overall live a daily life showing much unity between all the different sectors in Israel. However, there is a tiny minority of Israeli Jews, like your own London, who hate their Jewish identity. They prefer to be Israeli, like the people in France are French and the people in Spain are Spanish. Well, they just want to be Israeli. They hate to be associated as Jews. And it is those people, this small minority of people in Israel, who always focus on the division with a very anti-religious attitude because they spend their whole lives distancing themselves from any connection to their Jewish identity. The problem is that this small minority has a huge presence in the media, the universities, and the justice system. Wow, it sounds very similar and is akin to the hostile takeover of culture by the left in Western civilization, America, Britain, Canada, Australia, etc., where they are also trying to erase God and religion and religious values from the public sphere. Here in Israel, it is happening too, yet with a twist of anti-Judaism by a tiny minority. Again, it is super critical to understand that these people are a tiny minority. Most Israelis of all sectors feel a tremendous sense of unity as could be seen by the thousands of secular Israelis who came out to donate blood for all the religious people injured at the Meron tragedy on Lug Bomer, and the heartwarming acts of some Arab communities near or around Meron that opened up tables of refreshments to serve all the Jewish and many religious first aid responders who were trying to save the lives of the injured in that tragedy. Some people might think that this belief of your own London Thinking that he has no relation to his fellow religious Jews is something new. But unfortunately, it is not. It has always existed. A friend of mine, Daniel Seaman, recently made a post on Facebook about a powerful moment he had with a Holocaust survivor who survived the Auschwitz death camp while they were together on a trip in Poland visiting Auschwitz. Daniel recounts on how they got into talking about life, Judaism, different ideologies of Judaism, as they were together walking in Auschwitz. And how he cynically said to the survivor that at least in Auschwitz, the Nazi, the Nazi death camp, there were no differences and division since they all faced the same fate at the hands of the Nazis. 
However, the Auschwitz survivor totally surprised him. The survivor told Daniel that the differences and division even manifested themselves in the Auschwitz death camp. The survivor pointed to a long structure and said that that is what housed the Jews who, in their view, had nothing to do with Judaism. They refused to be together with the religious Jews because they told the Nazis that they were not like those Jews. So they were housed separately. What they didn't understand, and as the survivor said, is that the Nazis despised them more than the religious Jews because at least the religious Jews didn't deny being Jewish. The Nazis even enjoyed being crueler and abusive towards those Jews who denied their Judaism. That is actually a powerful lesson. In life, people respect you more, even if they might dislike you, if you are proud of your identity. Anyone who despises their own identity is less respected by others. As my friend Daniel ended his post, it is so sad that Jerome London and his fellow minority cult didn't learn anything from history. But once again, I want you to understand Israeli society is a very strong and united society, even with the many sectors in Israeli society that bring with it many societal challenges and daily frictions. Still, the citizens in the state of Israel, religious Jews, secular Jews, ultra-Orthodox Jews, Christian, Muslim, etc., Arabs, we are more united on a daily basis than divided. And that definitely is something beautiful about the Jewish state of Israel that does not get enough attention in the media, which instead uses its platform to further create division. We have to be better than the media. Pulse of Israel, frontline videos from the Holy Land. Support our work by donating today.